So we know that uh, today is the Feast of Purim, and I have already been teaching for uh, maybe, what, three meetings, two or three, one out in Bellevue, bringing all kind of information out of Esther. There is so much information, and I purposely left notes home that I would not look at. Um, we're going to fo focus on Mordecai, because he really is the star of this story. But they call, you know, we honor Esther, and that was Mordecai's cousin. And just a few things that I do want to say again about this um, is that the book of Esther is a book of reversals and great reversals. And I want you all to believe God in your life. I, I want you to be prepared to have a reversal. Because this isn't a, a hocus pocus like we're going to wave a wand and you haven't been being prepared and, and then think everything's going to change because we don't move past our last act of disobedience. And I know that's not fun to hear that, but it's the truth. And God does want you to be the head and not the tail, and he wants you to know. We've got to remember something. We're the people with authority in the earth. Amen? And there are realms, and we talked about that over the weeks, of you know the realm of the spirit in us, our soul realm, the body realm. But there are realms in the earth, under the earth, and we really need to understand more than what we're in. And I want you all to expect God. He wants you to be expectant. Amen. You don't get diminished in the waiting. Like a pregnant woman, you are enlarged. So just a few things to encourage you again about the reversal. Everything you see in the beginning of the book of Esther gets reversed by the end. And Haman is in honor in the beginning. At the end, Mordecai is in honor. At the beginning, Haman has a signet ring from the king. At the end, Mordecai has that. In the beginning, you see that uh, Haman's at the gate. Remember, he's at the gate, but at the end, he ends up with everything that belonged to the enemy. And Father God, I want us to be a people that qualify. Remember at the banquet, the first banquet, Haman is so happy and proud. In 24-hour period, second banquet, Haman is terrified, and he loses his life. So the gallows meant for Mordecai became the very same gallows on which Haman gets hung. But we're going to talk about uh, we as me and whoever, the other people up here, they're invisible, but uh, I'm glad they're helping me. But today is the Feast of Purim, and it's Adar 14. And Adar is the last month before the beginning of the year Nisan in the religious calendar, because there's a civil calendar. So this month, Adar, it, this is where we have the Feast of Purim. Purim means lots, lots. And this feast actually celebrates the deliverance of the Jews from a plot designed to kill them. Just for history's sake, because you do need history, geography, language, and culture. And we're so used to Christian these services, and you think you're supposed to do something and get hyped up and out of breath and hop on a foot and turn and twirl. And that was like, wow, we had such a good meeting because we were all moving. And it's like, you could be stiff as a board right now. And God could say one thing to you that changes your life. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we want to hear that one thing today. Remember the king of Persia. He had a feast, and he summoned the queen Vashti to appear before him and his officials because she was very beautiful. They were getting drunk, and she refused, and the king was enraged, and then he got the officers, the men, to come together to say, what are we going to do to the, her? Because if she disobeys him, all the women are going to become rebellious, and Actually, the king was sorry for that because when he came to his senses, it says, you know, he, he remembered what happened to Vashti. Anyway, from that moment on, they had to find the right queen, and there was a contest that was initiated among the eligible, beautiful young virgins. They had to be beautiful. I don't think there was probably 500 gorgeous women. There's probably a handful, and the, only the beautiful ones got in there. Amen. 
So one of the versions was Esther, and Esther was a Jew, and she was an orphan that got raised by her cousin Mordecai, and then we know the story. She pleases the king. I told you she was mentored at the highest level. Do you all remember the word purification? She received the beauty treatments. Purification in Hebrew means you're polished. You are purified. It's the word detergent and rinse. And she went through a mentorship for one solid year. And I like to look at her this way, that she is a woman. And don't think of the book of Esther right now, just Esther being for women. Let's just say the anointing that was upon her prepared her. She, and she also as well knew how to usher in a climate for the king. And listen, we are Gentiles. I believe most of us are Gentiles in here. And where we are in history right now, it's going to be a full circle. The Gentiles have got to go before the king to save the Jews. Amen? And we're going to help usher them in back to the Lord. So it's to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. The gospel's to the Jew first. So I want all of us, you know, we're going to stay in this. We are going to, I'm going to continue after decades of loving Israel and sowing into Israel and being blessed because of it. I'm doing the things in Olive Tree that the Lord has shown me to do to make sure every one of you all get blessed and that the glory of God is filling our lives. Amen. Amen. So we know Esther becomes the king, queen. She, well, all right, okay. Esther 2.21. So Esther 2.21, we know we're going to focus on Mordecai now. It said, in those days, in those days, and we know Esther has become queen, Mordecai sat in the king's gate. And in those days, say, in those days, days. two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthon and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth, and they sought to lay hand on the king. His name, listen, (laughs) I'm just going to call him King A. (laughs) King A. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out, therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. So what's important here is this in those days because Mordecai finds out that there's a plot, an assassination plot against the king. And what I want to focus on today because I've told you the book of Esther is filled with so much information. And I do want to reiterate, they say in the commentaries, the name of God is not found in Esther. But I told you last Sunday there are four scriptures that are part of an acrostic. And I believe two, it's the name yod heh vav God's name is an acrostic in certain scriptures that are actually showing you hidden in the scriptures and that acrostic, the name of God. There are no J's in Hebrew, but I mean in, um, in English, but in Hebrew they would be Yahuwah. And most people won't say his name, the Jews won't. So they put capital L-O-R-D in the Bible, and that is Adonai, to be respectful. But those scriptures are actually, in those scriptures where you see the acrostic, it's God, it's overturning the counsels of man. And there are things happening right now in your lives and my life and even Olive Tree that are behind the scenes, And as I was in very deep prayer before this meeting, praying for hours on end, hours, when I came out of prayer, I received a text from Prophet Janet. Janet is one of the most accurate prophets to give personal prophecies of any of the prophets I've ever met, and I know a lot over the years. And I'm just going to share one thing she said. God said, you don't understand everything that's happened And I'm paraphrasing, but soon you're going to know why things happened the way they did, and you're going to the other side, 
and I will use the people needed to help you that will surprise you. And I do want to say something about you, Pastor Carl. Can you stand up for a second? This is Carl's church. And Carl and Leanne are so first century church minded. They didn't even know, and we had been out of a building for, I don't know, was it anybody know, maybe two, almost two months, and Dave Dalton opened up his place, Patrick opened up his, uh, his office, and we were doing phone, and what I said, I will never stop, and I don't care what we have to go through, but Carl and Leanne, without even knowing, opened up this place, and the Lord, I said to God, I need a resting place, so Carl, I just want to honor you, I love Carl and Leanne, I've known them for a long time, and they're very anointed, and, and my prayer is that we've been a blessing to you, I mean, we love you all, and we've gotten to know you better, and so we love you, and honor you, and he's, a, he's with me at WCA, he's a leader in WCA, shows up every week, I mean, uh, Let's see, I need to get on home. Y'all have any caffeine or anything? Woo! Okay, so Esther 2.21, we say, in those days. So it didn't happen immediately. 2.21, I want you to see this if I can get through it today. I want you to see the loyalty to the king. And this was highlighted to me to bring out today, the loyalty to the king. All right, he's being loyal to the king, but the Lord's saying, I want you to take it loyalty to the king. And the Lord's saying, today, I want to highlight, I want your loyalty to me, says the Lord. Loyalty to the king. All of this was a setup that would later expose a hidden plan. And when Mordecai, heard these two men coming against the king that they were going to kill him. He got the information to Esther. He's working behind the scenes with Esther to go before the king and save his life. Listen, I don't like to get bad news. I don't like to find out things about people or things that they've said. But, but you need loyal people around you. Amen? And I do have loyal people in my it got to the point, I'm like, uh, do you have good news? Because I don't like bad news, but I do want to know an assignment against me, and sometimes it rips your heart out. Amen? And God, a couple of months ago, he said, I will reveal snakes in the grass. I'm like, woo, God, you want everything to be all right, but God knows what works behind the scenes in your life, and I'm not talking just, I'm not talking about church stuff. Or this church, I'm talking about the assignments of the enemy against you. He's not to be toyed with, but we have authority. And I want you to know, the Lord said, I want to take all of you into a higher realm. And when you say, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to spend hours and hours on, in, in hours in prayer. Guess what? There are raiding parties against you in the spirit realm to destroy you, but you've got to endure. Amen. I know that. I live it. It's like, okay, yeah, but you're not going to come another inch. I take an authority. There are borders, and I don't stop. And I get the intercessors to work with me till we outlast the enemy. And I've been doing this for a long time. And I know when there is an assignment against us, and I'm warring on behalf of all of you, and the things that come against you in your everyday life, your work, people, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And I want you to get that today, or you're going to have your feelings hurt every hour. You're not coming against flesh and blood. But people are a host. You say, well, what does that mean? God prepared a body for Jesus. There was a certain body prepared for the Lord God. And he has prepared a body for you. And there are disembodied spirits that are jealous of you, working against you, nonstop on us to relax our grip and cross borders. I came up here today to celebrate the Feast of Purim. I was like, whoop. Oh, man. Uh, but I want you all to break forth today. 
Amen. And I want you to rise up and I want you to leave here and say, yeah, I'm the head and not the tail. And I want you to have wisdom. I want you to know when to speak, when to be quiet, when to wait, when to go forward. And I want all of you all to get the instructions of God, not good ideas. Because a good idea would have had David building the temple. And God said, I didn't anoint you to do that. I never, that wasn't your assignment. I did not instruct you to do that. So we need the assignment of God. I want you all in your assignment. I look back sometimes and I'm like, wow, God, I wish I could go back. I saw this when I was 18 in high school on a lunch break. I walked in a room and on the blackboard it said, I wish I were now what I was when I wanted to be what I am now. (laughs) I said, whoa, let me memorize that. And then as I got older, I said, I wish I were now what I was when I wanted to be what I am now. And I look back over that process, and there were so many things in that process I wish I had cherished and stopped. But I was so, I, you know, there are type A women. That means attitude, good attitude, <laughs> GAs. But listen, I was like, wow, I'm just, I have that personality to keep going, keep going. And I thought, if I had it to do over again, I would do things differently. And wouldn't we all? Wouldn't you always do it differently? But getting back to loyalty, Father, we just want to bless you right now and we want our ears open to hear what you have to say. And I want you to go to Psalm 31, 23. Psalm 31. And Cheryl and Errol, cherish these days with your children, and I know that you do. Amen? cherish these days. God bless them with five children, and they're very disciplined, beautiful, well-trained children. And Errol and Cheryl have poured into them, and they are going to be mighty warriors on the earth. Amen? So Psalm 31, 23, David said this, O love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful. And this is a word I I got yesterday. God saying, listen, love me. Love me with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your might, for the Lord preserves. And he's saying, I'm going to watch over you. I will guard you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to lead you. I am going to keep you. I'll also keep you secret. That's, I'm going to keep you hidden. You can say, well, the world is supposed to know about me. You better ask God for wisdom because Psalm 82, I believe, says that the, the enemy, and I'm paraphrasing, but he rages against the hidden ones, that they take counsel together against those that are hidden. You need to be hidden. You need to understand when to be quiet and when to speak. We need great wisdom. God, give us great wisdom in how we deal with every trial that comes our way, every test. You want to pass the test. You have to pass the test. You're not going to the next test till you pass the test. You have to pass the exams. And one of the words that keeps coming from this pulpit is the word preparation. And we need preparation. Don't get out of that preparation. God works in strange campaigns. God leads in unusual ways. God says things like you won't borrow vessels. You won't see wind or rain, but the valley shall be filled. So it's may the faith of Abraham, our father, God, just overtake us today that we understand, like I said in the beginning, reversals. He did not stagger at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in God, persuaded that God would perform what he had promised. Our God is not a liar. He cannot lie. He can never forsake you. He can never leave you. He can't leave you. He said, I'll never leave you. God, we thank you today that you are with us. And the Lord is saying, as you recommit to me in a loyalty to please me and walk with me, I'm going to preserve you. I will preserve the faithful. 
Amen? And then it said he, what, plentifully rewards the proud doer. So he's going to plentifully reward the proud doer. The proud doer was somebody that was in pride. So he's saying they're going to get their reward, but I'm going to preserve you. And something that you and I need to remember, we reap what we sow. And God will not be mocked. God is not going to be mocked. Everything happening in your life is from seeds that you have sown, words that you have spoken, and you can't blame it on anybody else. Say, well, they did this or that. You had the authority to speak something different. Amen? No matter what anybody else has said. So, Father, we rise up today, and we want you to preserve us, and we want to be called faithful. When the Lord returns, will he find faith on the earth? So, speaking of being faithful, I was brought into this next arena, and I was like, wow, Lord, uh, whew, uh, I had to get before the Lord on my floor yesterday and ask him to search me and forgive me and cleanse me. If you are in leadership, you've got to walk this out before you bring it. You have got to, I'm not just bringing a sermon. I have to live it, go before God. You're laboring, you're crying. Sometimes I'm crying so hard, I get blood, sh my eye, their blood vessels were broken. You want to ask me why? From crying before the Lord. Amen? So Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. You may wish today you didn't come. Amen? because I'm getting ready to hit something and I'm not the one. The Lord is hitting this because he wants to save us. Amen. There are all kind of prophetic words on things that are going to go wrong and this is going to happen and that will fail. Listen, I've got, we have lived through all types of things and the Lord never once did we hurt for one thing. Never once were my children ever hungry. They always had diapers. They always had clothing. There were times people would give us clothing that was so beautiful. As twin boys, they, would, they were little, and I had to keep them in the same outfit so they didn't run away. And I, I could say, oh, they, I see two pinstripe outfits. Oh, there they go. But, but see, people would just give me things. And they didn't give me used things. They gave me brand new stuff. Amen. It was not cheap. And I thought, what a blessing. God's saying, listen... Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek right things, right decisions, and all that stuff, these things will be added to you. You're not going to worry about what you're going to wear. You're not going to worry about what you're going to eat. He said, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of the evil in each day will t is sufficient. God, I'm asking today that you anoint the people that hear me to live today to the fullest, that we really live it to the fullest. If you're sick right now, I'm asking for a reversal. Amen. Amen. If you have financial problems, God reveal the wisdom problem. Bring reversal. Amen. Amen. I heard Kevin today I say something. He said, it's time to unload and get clean before God. And this is just me paraphrasing Kevin. He said, look, you know what? If you owe taxes, unload yourself right now. Pay those taxes now. If you are afraid every time you see a police officer because of something, come clean now. Right. Unload yourself so you can go forward. And God, we believe you. So in Matthew 6, 24, I'm talking about loyalty today. And it says, no man can serve two masters. It is virtually 100% impossible for you to serve two masters. You cannot, you can't do it. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You, you can't do it. It is impossible. He's, then he says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. 
God's saying, today, I want you to come back to me. I want you to commit to me. Here's the question from the Lord. Why are you afraid to 100% walk with me because you can't walk with me any other way? You're not sort of married. When you got married, you might wish you were, but you listen, God's saying, you're, you're, not, you didn't, you're not just kind of married. God's saying, I want all of you. Jesus wanted all of them, and if you weren't selling out, you weren't going with him. And I thought about this as I read the scriptures over the years. He knew Judas was going to go do what he did, and he never ran after him and said, don't, we would, don't, don't do that, don't, don't do that, you're going to, you're going to die. He didn't beg him. He didn't say, don't do it. God, and you say, oh, y'all aren't very good leadership in here. No, I'm going to be like Jesus. Amen? Amen. And you, you've, you're getting the word. It's like, just decide, Lord, please anoint me to understand Amen. covenant and faithfulness. Amen? Amen? So I want you to go to Luke chapter 16, Luke 16 and verse 10. Luke 16. See, I went before the Lord to study the Feast of Purim, and the Lord brought me in a whole other angle and i will say whatever he asked me to say no matter what and luke 16 10 tell me when you're there luke 16 10 and i want you to think about mordecai he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much if you're faithful in something very small you're going to be faithful in something large. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? See, there's a level called true riches. And then there's the love of mammon. And then he says, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. The Jews believe that Mammon was a demon, a demon of greed. So I'm going to read something to you that I've had this Bible for years called the Mirror Bible, and it's an interesting Bible. He's not Hebraic, but I do like what he had to say here. He said, being unfaithful with unrighteous mammon disqualifies you to be trusted with true riches. That means that in this life, there's something called true riches. And God wants to be able to trust you and if you can't tithe $10, give God $1, don't, you're, you're waiting for the jackpot or whatever it is, the ticket you're buying, I don't know, at the grocery. I saw some of you on, no, I'm just kidding. But look, it says, if you cannot be trusted in stewarding what belongs to someone else, your reputation will stop others giving to you, and your life remains one of a slave rather than an owner. God does not want you in, as a slave, though we are servants of the Lord. Amen? I don't know if this is just for a couple of people right now saying, whatever it takes to have the true riches. God didn't say he didn't want you to have money. He never said he didn't want you to be rich. But you've got to understand the difference between being faithful to God, serving God, or serving mammon. So listen to this. When mammon fails... He said, friendship survives. But I'm going to keep, I want to keep on this. In verse 14, the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him, meaning they sneered at him. And I like what this man said. The Pharisees were listening all along to all these parables since their fondness for money was the lure in the stories Jesus told. They were obviously intrigued and addicted to witness how he continued to dismantle their hypocrisy, even though they sneered 
at what he said and made a mockery of it. Jesus continued, in your self-righteousness, you might appear to be the heroes in the eyes of the people, but God knows your hearts and what might be highly esteemed by people is rotten to the core in God's opinion. Amen? So, Father, forgive us for what we think is great. And when we don't understand somebody in a trial, Joseph was in a trial. And I love what one of my mentors said. Over the, he said he was, he was gaining people management skills. And he had to be where he was. And I think he had to be there to save his life. But he was mentored by the Lord. So the Lord is speaking to us today, and he's saying, I want you to take stock of where you are as we are headed towards the Passover. At the Passover, there's unleavened bread, and there was a ceremony with the Jews where they actually got all of the leaven out of the house, and they would, uh, the father, they would light a candle, and, and the house would be dark, and they'd have to go through the house to find certain things to remove them, Amen. And I'll tell you about it later when we get near Passover. But Lord, we want to thank you today because we believe you. Yes. We believe you. Yes. And we believe you that the book of Esther is a book of reversals yes. and that that is where we are in time right now yes. and that you really are raising up Esther's and Mordecai's and it's an anointing. But Esther was prepared. And I want to say this because Esther was prepared. One woman is prepared Everybody else got to actually be saved. There aren't a million Esthers. And God, raise up who are the Esthers, Father? Where are the Mordecais that have, they paid a price. They were willing to lose their life. I read a story that Don Finto wrote about 10 years ago. And I don't know if I'm saying it exactly right, but here's the gist of it. And if anybody read his book, Prepare, I think it came out around 2014. But I believe it was a Muslim that got saved. He received Jesus. And they came in to, the Muslims came in to kill him. And they said, renounce your faith or we're going to kill your son. And they picked up his son who was about eight years old. They were beating his son, just going to kill him. And the father loves his son. And he said, son, I've got to renounce because they're going to kill you. I, I've got to save you. And the eight-year-old boy says, and I think he was about eight, he said, no, Father, no, Father, don't renounce your faith. I will be with Jesus soon. And they killed him in front of him. We, 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 we get upset if we don't get Andy Griffith on in time. It's like, God help us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, God, prepare us. Like, we get upset if it's too hot, it's too cold. If the food was a little bit undercooked or overcooked, we, we're, we don't even know how blessed we are. And when I first came up here today during the praise and worship, the Lord said, tell the people to thank me. Yes. Thanking God is going to keep you in a mode of blessing. But when we're ungrateful, you actually open up a curse over yourself. So today, Lord, I'm asking you as a shepherd over this room, this ministry right now, I'm asking you, Lord, as I go forward and, and bring them the food and the water, that, Lord, all of the burrs in their coat are removed and all the flies and all of the cuts and all of the different things in the eyes where, you know, you've seen their eyes, the, the sheep. And, God, I'm asking you to cleanse them all today that we walk out here, that we have had the detergent of heaven and rinsed. Yes. May God do a work that yes. when you leave here, you're not like you were when you came in. Yes. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the body ministry because we're part of a body. There, there's not the main man. Yeshua's the main man. God's saying, I want team players. Yes. And if you ever study people that went into heaven and came back, I love Jesse Duplantis' story, The Close Encounters of the God Kind. They weren't allowed to call each other the, the right reverend, David, the, the, the left reverend, your highness, uh, the wrong reverend, Bill. I don't know if your name's Bill in here, forgive me. But, you know, uh, it's confusing all the different titles. It's like, what was I supposed to call him? 
mm -hmm, your highness, your cardinal so-and-so. It's like, no, God busts that stuff up. And they were serving each other. And they were doing everything they could, bending over backwards, to serve each other. Listen, at Olive Tree, I watch on Sundays. And if I go try to grab a, a, a vacuum cleaner, I think Patrick yanked it out of my hand one day, just vacuuming. When we leave this place, Carl, you can testify, it's spotless, isn't it? I, we won't li If there's one piece of paper, uh, anything on the floor, we're looking to see not one speck of anything will be left nothing because we're gonna we're gonna keep it like it was when we got here and we want to be a blessing amen so i want you to go to esther 3 1 is the lord dealing with you all yeah. lord we just want to bless you we want you to be our everything god's saying listen don't you want to be my friend because I will give you all the wisdom you need. I will tell you what you need to know. I will work with you like Abraham and tell you things that are hidden and be your friend. And that was what Janet had prophesied to me today. God said, I'm going to tell you things that you don't know. I'm like, well, God, I hope it's not bad. I hope it's good. Amen. So hear the word of the Lord. It's not going to be bad. It's good. So Esther 3, 1. After these things, after these things, what things? After those things, when you found out that Mordecai in those days, he was going to report what was going on. After these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him, set his seat above all the princes that were with him. So, all the king's servants that were in the king's gate, they bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Why? Because Mordecai is loyal to God, and he's not going to bow down to a man. So I want you to go with me in your Bibles and see it with your own eyes. Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. When I'm up here ministering, it's, I can tell the Lord is working in you all. And like I got to slow down here because he's talking individually to all of you all. I don't know what your personal cases are, but he said, I'm going to solve the cases of my people. I will save the cases and the causes of my people. So in Exodus 20, verse 3, this is what God gave Moses. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods face to face with me before in between us. And I've always said, if you love money, then you're, and this is money, you're saying come face to face with money. So you're being blocked. And the Lord is saying, I want you to be blessed. Yeah. See, you're thinking, oh, she's, she's saying these words and now, you know, we've been working so hard and God's saying, I want to give you true riches. Amen? Not mammon that's evil, that separates you from God, and you're in greed and avarice and covetousness. He's saying, I, just be with me. What did he do for Solomon? Did Solomon have to raise a trillion dollars? It was given to him. Amen? Yes. Did David? David wasn't hurting. Amen. They had, they, he had a nice palace that he lived in, but he didn't have a job nine to five to build that. God gave it to him. And the Lord's saying, what had happened in the book of Esther? The king said to her many, a couple of times, Esther, what is it you want? I'll give you up to half the kingdom. He was a ruler over 120 provinces from Ethiopia to India. He had great uh, responsibility told her she could have what she wanted. If you study the prophets, Elijah, 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 Elisha, they said to the people that they came in contact with, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus said it, what do you want? And the Lord's saying, why are you living below? I'm talking to myself too. Why are you living below? You're scratching, uh, that's not me. 
but you got to stop loving mammon. Like you're, you love mammon that you're afraid to tithe. Because you're afraid to tithe. Because you, mammon has got a hold of you. If I tithe, I won't be able to pay my bills. You've got to get out of that cycle and let it be broken. Let it break. I'll never forget the story of the man that came to me at Olive Tree 10 years ago. And he said, Pastor, I've got to pay my rent at five and I don't have it. I just, I've got enough to pay my tithe. But if I pay my tithe, I can't pay my rent. What do I do? I said, I don't care where you send your tithe, but don't neglect the tithe. Give to God what belongs to him first. You think I'm going to tell him something different? And by 5 o'clock, somebody had given him money for his rent and extra money. He trusted God. He's saying, okay, I trust you, Lord. Say, oh, she just needed his tithe. I don't even know how much he tithed. I don't even, I didn't look. I wanted him to be obedient to God first. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the Lord said, I want to take you all so much higher, yeah. so much higher yeah. to move the kingdom. Yeah. God told me he's going to give me men to help us to get to where we've got to go. Yeah. And that it would be a suddenly and a surprise. And I said, I have sown into other men's ministries my whole life. And the tornado came, and that building has not, nothing's wrong with that building. But we are not to, in there. That's all I'm going to say. God just said, you don't know why what happened happened. But I said, God, maybe some things I don't want to know. Maybe it's better for you not to know some things. Amen. Amen. So we're in a journey, and we've gotten to know Carl better. Carl, we love you so much. You're the, I told Fred, Carl is the sweetest person I've ever he is you're so kind and helpful with the musicians and just and we just love you but anyway you want me to keep going here look you shall have no other gods before me you shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that's in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So Mordecai knew the Torah, and he was not going to bow to the evil Haman. He was loyal to God. Now, go to Matthew 22, verse 35. Matthew 22, verse 35. See, we, we're not under law. But once you are born again, now you can receive the spirit of Torah means instruction. So the Holy Spirit can move on that word. It jumps off the page. God's speaking to you. Amen? Obeying laws is not getting us into heaven. We're saved by grace. But Matthew twenty-two thirty-five. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in your law? This is in the day of Jesus. What's the greatest commandment in the Torah? Jesus said unto them, him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, <clears throat> and it should be with all your might. This, because your mind and your soul are the same. But this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, You shall love your neighbor as you love you. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And I like what my mentor said. If you could love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind, you actually wouldn't need a Bible. Because you, if you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, you are fulfilling all of the Torah laws by loving God. And the Lord's saying, you're on the earth to love me. And we've gotten into works and stuff 
And the Lord's saying today, this is going to be the Feast of Purim is going to be a joy for you because today I am going to remove all of that stuff from you so that you can walk with me in joy and in shalom peace and in right decision making. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy. And it says in the Holy Ghost. Do we have joy? The joy of the Lord is your strength. People need to see you're unmoved by what is going on, that you stand, that you're able to stand. God can make you invisible. I've got so many testimonies of how God has protected me, and I believe made me invisible when something dangerous could have happened against me because I believe him, and I've got childlike faith. You just need faith, a grain of a mustard seed. I've seen healings and deliverance and supernatural money and every need I've got, I just have it. Amen? Because I'm seeking the kingdom. And you say, well, what is the kingdom? Precepts, concepts, statutes, decrees, ordinances, laws. Study Psalm 119. David tells you the kingdom is in order. This is an organized kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is another name for God himself. And the Lord's saying today, I want you to understand kingdom, not Roman, Greco, Western, churchy, Annie, whoever, orphan Annie, Christiani. Well, Esther was an orphan. Amen. So I'm in the wrong profession, I think. I'm not sure. Let's see. Matthew 22 is so beautiful because God's saying, listen, If you do these two things, if you can do these two things, you literally are fulfilling all of the commandments like Abraham. Like Abraham. He believed God and it was credited to his account as if he were obeying all of the Torah laws. So, Father, we do love you. We love your word. You do esteem your word greater than your name. Please remove from us where we have thought that some kind of formats that we have, though there are formats when we come together or we'd be totally out of order. And God wants his word to go forth. Amen. So, Father, we thank you because you're saying today, listen, Mordecai is obeying the, he's not going to bow down. You say, well, that was the Old Testament. Why is this in the New Jesus is saying there's nothing greater if you do the first and the second commandment is exactly like the first, then listen, everything hangs on the law and the prophets. Are you listening? All right, go to Psalm 119, verse 113, and I'm about to wrap this up. I brought to you what the Lord wanted me to bring, and we've had some really amazing mysteries that got revealed in here and all kind of things, but today is straight word. And God is saying today, I want your loyalty. I want you to come back. Stop being disloyal to me, having two masters come back to me. I will, I'm drawing you unto me even right now, says the Lord. Lord, we praise you. I want people to see the glory of God in your life. Amen. In your families, in your businesses. May you all be the top salesmen may you all be the top companies may you all be the examples but in psalm 119 verse 113 this is what david says i hate vain thoughts i hate being double-minded i hate being ambivalent i hate being double-minded say well what does that have to do with this because i'm telling you that mordecai was loyal to the king Mordecai's he's something's getting ready to happen for him because of his loyalty to the king and I'm saying the king for him is God first then the king on earth what you do to God what you do to man is what you're doing to God the way you treat men is the way you're treating the Lord amen and Samach is the the Psalm 119 is the Hebrew alphabet And where I'm reading right now, I hate vain thoughts, David said, but your Torah do I love. And Samach is the 15th letter, and it is a picture of tent props. 
that you're propped, the tent prop. This is the way uh, it says in Isaiah, um, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Stayed is the tent props. I'll keep you in perfect peace. In Hebrew, it means shalom times shalom. If your mind is supported by the word of God. And David is saying this here, I hate double-mindedness. And the Lord's saying today, you can't serve two masters. You, you will go insane. And another thing I know from the Psalms, and I don't know if it was Psalm 11 or 12, but there was a man named Martin Boover who wrote a book. It was called I and Thou. And he was talking about how the Jews, he's, he's Jewish, and he was talking about how the Jews create another heart that they work out of. All right, that's being double-minded. To be, your mind is your soul. So if you've got two hearts, you're, you are creating something. You've created a mindset that is not in alignment with the word. And that would be, your th you, you want things to be comfortable and easy and you want to, prosper without God and he's saying you can't do it amen so Jeremiah 2 11 through 13 Jeremiah 2 11 through 13 and this is what Jeremiah said to the children of Israel Jeremiah 2 11 are you are you almost there yes. and this is a word for us Jeremiah 2 11 it says, has a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people changed their glory for that which doesn't profit. Like you created another god that you're serving. Amen? Be astonished, O you heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can't hold water. So the Lord is saying, listen, you want to create something. You don't want the fountain of living water. You want to create, like the Pharisees, programs and formats and all of these things that make you think you're safe. Amen? And the Lord is saying, come back to me today. In the last place today, Esther 6. Go to Esther 6. Esther 6, verse 1, and as I was studying this, I think the Lord, um, I don't think, I know that the Lord was speaking to me personally to tell some of you in the room that some of these things are going to happen for you. Esther 6, 1, because what are we talking about today? Mordecai. Mordecai was loyal. Mordecai revealed a plot against the king that was going to kill him. And in Esther 6.1, it says, uh, do you all remember Esther 5? That's where the first feast happened with Esther. And they haven't gotten to the second feast yet. Do you remember this? And it said, on that night, see, she had the first feast, and then that night, I want you to see the mercy of God. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. All right, so these were, this was time, this was a long time after Exodus, uh, Esther 2 that I told you in those days. So the king did not have a conversation with Mordecai. He just found out that he was saved. But look what's going on. On that night, the king couldn't sleep. And this is what I want to decree to those of you all that qualify in here. Because the Lord is saying now, I'm getting ready to bring some reversal in your life and turn things around. And where you were like Mordecai in the beginning of the story, you're going to be Mordecai at the end of the story. Amen? Amen. So the Lord woke the king up. I've had this happen to me before where I was awakened and I was able to see something that was where these boys were coming into the yard to steal something out of our car. I had a younger sister and we were teenagers and she had a boyfriend and I didn't know that he had stolen a, this is back in the days of in your car, tape players. And I didn't know her boyfriend stole that tape player and put it in the car 
And I, it's like one or two in the morning. I was sound asleep, and I was awakened, and I could see a car drive up. We lived on these streets called Parkway. You could see a car. I saw the car go up, and my heart started going. And then the car came down. They turned off the lights, and the boys crept up into the yard to steal the tape player. Well, I had found out that it was stolen, and I didn't want it in the car because I was walking with the Lord. And my, I could not open. I watched them. I thought, yeah, you boys get that thing out of there. And after they got it, I thought I'd scare them because they already had it. And I thought, get that out of there. I don't want something stolen. And I said, woo, <laughs> out the window. And they, they just took off like at two in the morning to get away. But see, the Lord woke me up to see what happened. And I didn't say a word because I said, you are not. My sister would have probably tried to kill me. But I said, no, God, you did that because you knew I wasn't going to drive that car with the stolen tape player in it. And I was awakened. And I'm asking God to awaken all of you all to anything that's coming against you that you don't know about. Amen? That God reveals the plots against you and the spirits working against you. And when you start seeing things like, hey, that deal went bad, this deal went bad, listen, wake up. Wake up. And look at this. It was found written that Mordecai had told of Big Fauna and Teresh. I thought I can see them like two bouncers, Big Fan. Big Fan was out there and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlain. I renamed him Big Fan. The keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on the king. And the king said, what honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there's nothing done for him. And the king said, who's in the court? And Haman was come in, and everybody knows the story. Haman thinks it's about him, and he wants the greatest honor in the world bestowed on him. And the king says, go do that for Mordecai. All right, everybody stand up. Father, we just want to thank you today. Come on, we're going to praise the Lord together, and we are going to see the children have something they want to do. I want to ask you all a question today because all I, this is my biggest concern today. I want to know if you all heard the heart of the Lord. Because yes. I can't, we're not just coming down here to bring Hebraic alphabet and Hebraic mysteries, though that's part of everything. But we need to know what the Father is saying and thinking and what God saying, listen, I'm, lo I'm going to raise up a people that are loyal to me. Yes. And the winds will come. I've told you there's going to be wars and rumors of war. But look, God saved Noah. And God said, I'll prepare an ark for you. And you'll work with me. And we will go to Goshen and we won't even be seen. And when the plagues come or whatever goes out, we're, going to not, we're not going to be part of that. But that's going to be for those of you today that say, okay, Father, forgive me. I've been afraid. I was afraid we didn't have enough money, this and that. And the Lord's saying, I own all the silver and all the gold. There is no shortage. God doesn't have a shortage. We have a wisdom problem. And I'm not putting you down. I'm saying today, God's saying, rise up. Rise up.